Hi, Gio. Hi, Gio. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> well, no worries. Everybody's late or either not coming tonight for whatever reason. Some, but some of them just can't make it tonight. Okay. Let's see. Is that the one that we're supposed to be doing? I thought it was number seven. Hmm. Um, let me see. Oh, that's the wrong book. I'm in the wrong book all together. This ain't the book either. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh no, that's it. Recording in progress. Oh, my bad. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, it's in your name that we come together. May you open our hearts, our mind, and our soul to understand what we are learning, and may we walk away with some knowledge of something new. In your name, so be it. Hi, Sheila. All right. So I hear you. Uh-huh. Sonia, you want to read? Sure. Okay. The you chapter is the whole 16. thing and then go back. Let me turn it. The chapter 16, be not troubled. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. If we were to ask the grain of wheat, its option about the mill, it would of course. Where? Okay. Oh, <laughs> about the mill, it would of course say that the mill is a place of pure torment. Nonetheless, that it is where the grain is transformed into the glory of the bread that feeds the world. If we were to ask a piece of wood for its opinion about the saw, it would say, that it is the cruel tool that <clears throat> delacerates its entrails. Even so, thanks to this supposed torture, the wood becomes refined and useful for noble purposes. If we were to ask the stone about the burn, it would certainly explain that it is an abdominal persecutor of its peace of mind, wounding it day and night, however, it is due to its actions that the stone is raised to the status of being one of earth's polished and gleaming treasures. So it is with the soul. So it is with the struggle. If we were to question people about the flesh, they would reply with a thousand absurdities. If we were to listen to them speak of suffering, we would hear old nonsense. Yes, we do. Mm. If we were to ask them to say something about their problems, they would shed bitter tears. Nevertheless, it is imperative to realize that from the body that has been disciplined by terrible obstacles and purifying sufferings, the spirit always reemerges more beautified, more robust, and more enlightened for immortality. Therefore, be not troubled before the struggle. Instead, take a closer look. What may seem like a failure is often a victory, and what seems to contribute to your death is, in fact, a contribution to your progress in the eternal life. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I think this is a very interesting. Um, well, I like the analogy. Yeah, of life, mm -hmm. the different stages of life that we grow to grow through. Like, um, if we were 
to ask that the grain of wheat, its opinion. Um, well, I think that what happens is that um, every time you something, it's like the analogy of, you know, the it gets polished in the end when all the work is done. Um, and it's refined into something better and, and, and beautiful, I want to say. Right. So us. Right. And I look at it like when I listen to different people talk about earth and how it's, um, there's a lot of torment. There's a lot, you know, of going, there's a lot going on, you know, like that, um, like the grain of wheat, you being, it's being pressed to, um, to become better, but we don't look at it like that when we suffer uh, predominantly on earth and, or when we look out and see other people suffering or being killed or their houses burning, or, you know, we think that um, something could have prevented or God could have prevented it and uh, not understanding the whole scope of why we're here and, and, and that, things that we go through, all of it makes us a better person here on earth. And then the wood, you know, which grows from the earth. And then someone is uh, cutting down this beautiful tree, let's say to make a, um, I don't know, a vase. And the, but the wood goes through all of these different processes. And you could say, even a person, you go through all these different processes and you may be tortured or feel like you're being tortured, but you're not, you're becoming a better person. I don't know anyone who's gotten uh, um, an illness or um, that was, all right, that caused them to have to go to the hospital for uh, assistance by a doctor and didn't come back out of it and not have some kind of compassion for another person going through the same thing. In other words, they're learning from their life lessons, no matter what they are. I think if there was no pain and or suffering and things, then it wouldn't matter. It would be no point to change. You wouldn't be forced to, that's for sure. Well, yeah, but that you are more inclined to. But I think it's it's um, it's kind of sad that a lot of people don't understand the suffering. Well, because... and I think that you don't not always need to understand the spiritual aspect. What I'm saying is that the emotional and or physical pain, if it didn't exist, then. I don't think anybody would care. You just do it again. But I, I think the understanding of the spiritual aspect is another aspect that not everyone has. No, oh, that's true. That, so there's two sides, I get it. Yeah, so, be, so I think without the spiritual side of it, you, you're unconscious. Yeah. Because you're well, doing some it of again. us would think that, but. So some of us would think that, but not everybody would agree. No? Why? Because conscious in a human way is different than conscious in a spiritual way. Right, right. But I was talking about the physical level of, of, of the consciousness of what you're going through. If oh, you're yeah. not conscious of it, then like you were saying, you're apt to do it again and again without any uh, thought to it. It motivates you. <laughs> And if you have to do it over and over again, then um, shame on you. I, I don't see any growth. I don't see no purpose, but I do see unconsciousness. I mean, I, that's just how it comes to me. You're unconscious of, of um, the pain or the suffering, right? Well, either that or you just, um, you just don't care. Mm. Same difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. 
And yeah, okay. And so they were saying though, um, I guess the, the whole, this entire process is like life, but each person, you can either be um, a stone or you could be the wood or you could be um, a, a wheat piece of, you know, grain. Either way, there's a, there's a, there's a struggle. No one goes through life unscathed, I don't think unless you born for 15 minutes and you're gone, you know, you die. That's a newborn. But other than that, I, I, I can't imagine anybody being here, walking this planet unscathed. Well, like that's what it's trying to say here. You go through the pain and then you turn into something that's beautiful because of the struggle. And it's trying to tell you if you ask people about the flesh, they'd come up with a thousand absurdities. So they speak about suffering and other nonsense, but um, some people to go through that and they still don't change. I think the a good analogy of that is, unfortunately is people that um, have addictions. So that's a hard one. What do you mean people with addiction? Mm -hmm. So you can, get clean and you go back to the same thing because it's it's difficult, but you know, you can get it or not get it. And if you really want to make a change, you can. And you know, I think that's to me the main reason why they use the um the spiritual aspect of it. And some people just keep relapsing over and over or they can't get clean. And that's, that's hard, so. But yeah, well, I don't see their drug addiction or alcohol addiction any different than food addiction, really. No, I'm just saying addiction, period. Yeah, I, I got that. Even but the freaking electronics are starting, our kids are starting, or not mine, but they're starting to be addicted to electronics, so. And that's another addiction to add to the pot because, um, it is having an effect on them and, and society doesn't want to admit it just like the gun laws. I mean, the guns, they rather go after the individual who cre created the crime or who did the crime as opposed to go to those who's manufacturing the gun, making them available. And it's the same thing with um, the, uh, um, with the, um, uh, what do you call it? The one you just mentioned, <laughs> the electronics. And, you know, some of these sites that are not um, appropriate for children, but they still get to, they know how to go around and get to it. And some parents are not limiting the time and they're not consistent with the time of a child is on their devices. And they are saying that a lot of these uh, Things that these sites that these kids are going on are programming them. Matter of fact, they even say some commercials are programming people. I don't that's, know if you guys that's have been heard for of. a long time, long yeah. time. Um, that they that that's the purpose of them. Everything boils down to money. But I still think that the the parental controls are. I don't know. I've always called it the electronic babysitter. Hmm. Just put them in front of it, and that's it. Sheila, Jill, you guys have anything you want to say or add? Well, addiction runs deep. So if we're talking about addiction and like what you're talking about now, yeah, it's just like there's a big thing with the metaverse, Facebook kids, where they've sold kids information and put them in jeopardy. Where they didn't have the controls on it that they said they had the controls on. So it runs the gamut. So eventually it has to come back to either parental control, but it also as an adult, it has to come back to willpower. Can you walk away? Mm. You know, because ultimately, yeah, like my dad was an alcoholic. 
and he went through years where he was dry for a very long time, mm -hmm. like seven, eight, nine, ten, and then something triggered him, like on a deep level, and he would go off, and then it was like a nightmare again. Mm -hmm. Because he would disappear. When he would go off, he would disappear, and my mom would not know where he was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, addiction, there's so many different forms of addiction. And part of that is what, if we look at like uh, the eightfold path, the, like in the Hindu, the, you know, it's like the middle path, try to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of neutral to the addiction. Well, to me, that's also saying, can you have self-control and self-awareness? So that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't learn it yet, yeah. are they going to be faced with it again? Sure, they are. Until and I think they that's the point here. The point is that if you have a try to have a spiritual base, no one's saying it's easy. I think you have more of a chance that that's what AA is about in in but you have to put the work in just like anything else well sure so, so is um a course in miracles a course mm -hmm. in miracles is aa is similar to a course in miracles in some ways or what they have um them do and you have to put the work in you, mm -hmm. you can't you can't not not put the work in but if you don't learn it in this lifetime yeah i agree you're going to probably come back and have to face it again Mm -hmm. You know, as you guys are uh, talking, I was thinking about um, no matter what it is, whether it's education, uh, um, whatever, you have to put the work in no matter what it is, or what direction you want to go in. Well, and I'll give you an education note on it. So all year long, they've been working on essays. And I said, when you first start writing, it's really hard. But after you learn what the formula is and you understand what's being asked of you, it gets easier and easier. But, you know, and it's practice. It's not, you know, over time, you will get better if you continually practice. Yeah, I think that's true of everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Because I have this philosophy, like if you made mistakes and I said come see me to fix the mistakes and you don't fix it I'll leave that score but if you come see me and you know you made mistakes I will give it to you and help you correct the mistakes and then I will change your grade to a higher grade so my attitude about a mistake is it's only a mistake if you don't try to fix it well but you have to know because what the mistake is first you but have to know I know what the mistake is yeah no, but I give them back to work and I say, see me, get some help and we will fix it. And if they don't fix it, then I keep it. And if they fix it, I change their grade. Because in the process, they're learning what the mistake is, what they did wrong, and they're rewriting it. And they're taking the time to do that. If they're going to take the time to do that, then I'm going to give them partial credit for it. I'm not going to just count it all wrong because you what learn. What if life were like that? Huh? I said, what if life were like that? <laughs> But we're not have, making mistakes, we're making, it's all lessons. So it's really a lesson. Of course. Yeah, it all is. Everything is. And for some, it's easier than others. That's really, yeah. do you agree with Gina? Some yeah. it's easier than others? Uh, you, you, but that's only because they've done the work, you know? Right. But, uh, according to what we've been reading on a spiritual level, some things may look easy to another person, like how, for instance, there's always you you always see a a, a young genius, you know, or a prodigy, a prodigy, right? And you think all of a sudden this kid is a prodigy this lifetime, and all of a sudden he's got all that he's got a gift from God. No, there's no such thing. Everybody worked lifetime after lifetime to be where they are. And so, yeah, people think this prodigy just was born this way. Mm -mm. He worked to be that way or she worked to be there on that level. So whatever you do, 
it, it you you bring it back with you each lifetime. Now you it, you know you can't tell that to everybody because they don't believe in it or don't understand it or scare the hell out of them one way or another. But yeah, there's there's no like they're saying here. Nevertheless, it is imperative to realize that from the body that has been disciplined by terrible obstacles and purifying suffering, the spirit always reemerges more beautiful, more robust, more enlightened, more immortality. Therefore, be not troubled before the struggle. Instead, take a closer look. What may seem like a failure is very often a victory. And what seems to contribute to your death is in fact a contribution to your progress in the eternal life. And well, isn't that why we come back and do it over and over? Isn't that the point? So if yeah. you if you um, have a pain, whether it's physical or emotional, then there you go. That's what you I know, think anyway. Yeah, there's answers here all the time. Well, all if you didn't time. have to go to this, if that was not something, because we all know that, you know, even when you go through a heartbreak, a divorce, I don't care what it is, and maybe you turn around, and look back and say, I'm glad it happened. <laughs> because there's growth in it, of course. Right, right, yeah. right. Can uh, you put the reading up for a second so I can reread it? Because I'm going to chime in on one of those lines. Can I put it back up, you said? So I can see it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Because I, I think there's always, if, you know, without struggle, there is no growth. True. Sometimes you need, um, sometimes, so, and it could be, um, so if I look at it like a kid having a temper tantrum because he's at learning to do something, mm -hmm. when they're little, when they're first little about something, something might scare them. And yet after they face that fear and have gone through it a couple of times and I make the analogy, like how many of you can tie your shoelaces and they all raise their hand. Yes. But when you first learned to tie your shoelaces, could you do it? They're like, no, I go, exactly. I go now it's an automatic involuntary reflex because your brain has been trained to do it and you've done it so many times. So it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I said, so what you're learning is things that you're, you're not used to facing and it's taken your brain to do something different. And in that, some of you are struggling. Some of you, you're closing your eyes and you say you're getting the answer and then it's making more sense. So every one of you is doing it in a different way in order to learn this. Mm -hmm. Which one did you want to, uh, did you, here's the beginning of it. No, I wanted the middle regarding the struggle because I think. Is it this one? Yeah, it's just on the burden. It's a real pain in my way. Okay. Who, um, hold on. Last I'm going to have to, go, let me go and call you right back. Hold on. Bye. Mm -hmm. Regina, I got to go. I got to call oh. you right back. Okay. Bye. Well, I want to say that oh, yeah. sometimes there's, um, my thought is that sometimes you have a struggle and you can't bounce back from it. So you either go the other direction or you don't. So you either um, take it and work with it or you just take it and go deeper. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for everybody, unfortunately. No, no. That, you know... Yeah, the same thing doesn't work for everybody. That's very true. Jill, did you have anything you want to add? No, not right now. I'm just kind of listening and getting a feel of everything. But what do you think? No, it's everything that Mo said. I can agree with a lot of it or I said relate to it because of my own life experiences and others. Um, and I was also kind of thinking to myself that when we talk about struggles and experiences, especially the negative, because we don't um, 
we're okay when it's all good. And, Mm -hmm. you know, those are happy times, but when it's a struggle and I'm with myself reading the word and I don't have a scripture with me, but it was how God gave us the, I want to say the power or the authority to, um, that these are things that will happen, but it's how we, I'm, I'm having a hard time explaining it, but. Um, yeah, but you're doing good. It's, yeah, it's, just that. Like mm-hmm. what you do with it? bigger than that issue or that problem or that struggle mm-hmm. because he created us to be. But there's times that we can just get overpowered mm-hmm. and that's when we have to continue to stay in the word and you know have that full armor mentally physically whatever because we're going to constantly have those struggles or attack so i i'm learning or i've been focusing on what my internal powers are from god that i do have power over the struggles and the negative but i know nothing will will be okay overnight it takes time so like you said faster than others some could be a week, some could be six months, some could be four years. Everybody is going to be different. And I try not to compare. Well, if I got over this in a year, you should be able to. No, everybody's their whole self. So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. everybody's different and they process different. This is true. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. Well. Wow. Um, yeah, thank you for commenting. That's really great. Well, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything more I want to say you, Sonia. No. Okay. You want to do a closing prayer? Sure. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this study session, opening our eyes more to our brothers and sisters and ourselves the study group with those of us that are incarnate and those that are discarnate to come and join us to learn. We thank you and ask you to continue to bless us, guide us, and teach us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Father, our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and allow us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. We ask permission to close this educational session for the evening. So be it and so it is. So be it.